Well, it's a pleasure as always to be in the Lord's house with you all. If you have your Bibles, would you turn to Exodus 33 with me? Exodus 33. Tonight, continuing on with uh, what we were looking at this morning, uh, we're still on the Mosaic Covenant, uh, the covenant that God made with Israel uh, through Moses. And uh, tonight, uh, as we saw this morning, we looked at the uh, law of the covenant, uh, the blessings that the covenant promised, uh, and the law that God required of uh, men in order to receive it. And now we're looking at the uh, promise uh, that God would, even in spite of our failure to keep the covenant, uh, that he would bless us in Christ anyway. And so if you have your Bibles in Exodus 33, we'll just be reading verse 19 to begin. The scripture says, And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before thee, and I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee, and will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. Now let's go to our Lord in prayer. Father God, we come before you again, and Lord, we praise your great name, merciful and gracious. Lord, we thank you that you, uh, even in spite of our sin, Lord, and our failures to be pleasing to you, and nonetheless that you chose to have mercy on us in Jesus Christ. So Lord, we pray tonight that you would help us to uh, see the greatness that's in him, uh, your mercy. And Lord, we pray that it would spur us on to uh, do your work this week and to abstain from the sins that beset us. And Lord, we pray that if there are any lost in here, that you would draw them to be saved, uh, that you would help them to see uh, Jesus Christ lifted up for their sins. We ask that you'd be with our missionaries and help them to do the work that you've sent them to do, be with our leaders in this nation also uh, to uh, do their jobs rightly. Uh, Lord, we pray a special prayer now for those that uh, couldn't make it tonight, Lord, uh, that you would help them in uh, their troubles, uh, Lord, in their sickness, uh, Lord, even in uh, the uh, emotional difficulties that they may be having. Uh, Lord, we pray that you would be with them uh, and send your spirit to them and uh, cause them to remember your words to them, words of mercy. Uh, that you have chosen to have mercy and show your grace toward them, and that they ought to uh, 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 turn to you in joyfulness, Lord, uh, knowing that you've loved them. Lord, we pray that where we've sinned against you, that you'd forgive us. Uh, Lord, that you would cleanse our heart as we enter in on the study of your word tonight. And Lord, we pray that we would have the fellowship of your spirit here with us to help us understand it. And we ask all of these things in Christ's holy name. Amen. So just by way of going back over a little of what we looked at this morning, we saw all the blessings that come through this covenant, this promise that God made to his people. In Deuteronomy 28, verse 2, All these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee, if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. In verse 6, Blessed shalt thou be when thou comest in, and blessed shalt thou be when thou goest out. God chose and and promised to bless his people with all blessings. Uh, In every aspect of their life, they would be blessed. When they came in, they would be blessed. When they go out, they would be blessed. When they put their hand to do any work, it would prosper. When they went out to do uh, what the Lord had called them to do, to take dominion over the world, They would prosper in that. In all things, God would bless his people and establish them in his world. But we also saw what the penalty of breaking God's law was. In Deuteronomy 28, 15, But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. 
Verse 19, Cursed shalt thou be when thou comest in, and cursed shalt thou be when thou goest out. The Lord shall send upon thee cursing, vexation, and rebuke, and in all that thou settest thine hand unto for to do, until thou be destroyed, and until thou perish quickly. Uh, the uh, punishment for breaking God's law is to be cursed in everything, and finally to be cut off and die from the Lord. And we saw also that no one is able to keep this law that God had given. In Deuteronomy 31, 26, Take this book of the law and put it in the side of the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God, that it may be there for a witness against thee. For I know thy rebellion and thy stiff neck. Behold, while I am yet alive with you this day, ye have been rebellious against the Lord, and how much more after my death. He says that the law was given and it was put, uh, placed in the Ark of the Covenant before the Lord as a testimony against the people. That when they sin, it would stand as judge over them. And he said that he knew that even they were a stiff-necked people, as well as, of course, we are. That all are wicked, all are depraved and dead before God, and none can keep this law. All it does is stand as a testimony against us, that we cannot keep the law. But, again, as we've seen in the past, God, in giving his covenant, gives unconditional promises to bless his people. In Galatians 3.16, we read, Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He saith not and to seeds as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed, which is Christ. And this I say that the covenant that was confirmed before of God in Christ, the law which was 430 years after cannot disannul that it should make the promise of none effect. The law itself, the, the, the giving of conditions, is not enough to make God's promise of none effect, even though we can't keep those conditions. God made a promise. He made a covenant of grace with his people, and he will not turn away from it, though they disobey. This is also repeated in our passage here in verse 19 of Exodus 33. He said, I will make all my goodness pass before thee, and I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee, and will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. And in Romans 9, 16, Paul commenting on this says, So then it is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but of God that showeth mercy. Even though the children of Israel had sinned against him, and it says that his wrath was hot against them, and he uh, had occasion to destroy them, yet he says, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. He will show grace to who he will show grace. And uh, no disobedience on their part turns him away from his intention to show mercy to his people. It is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth. It's not of my desire to obtain or my efforts to obtain, but of God that shows mercy mercy towards me the lord uh, in this again confirm that principle that though god gives conditions and his conditions are such that no man can meet them yet the lord still intends to show grace and he will provide a way to give grace to his people and this we see is through jesus christ and I'd just like to go through and see how Christ is glimpsed in the law and promised. In 1 Corinthians 10.1, we read that Christ was there 
to provide for the people in the wilderness. Brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea and did all eat the same spiritual meat and did all drink the same spiritual drink. For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them and that rock was Christ. When they ate of the manna by the way, when they drank of the water that came forth from the rock, that was provided for them by Christ and testified of what Christ would do beforehand. Christ said, my flesh is meat indeed and my blood is drink indeed, signifying that he would give himself for the world. He would be the provision for all mankind. Christ also as obeying all the law of God fulfilled it. And thus, whenever we read a commandment, even in that terrible law of Moses, we read Jesus Christ and what he would do, how he would fulfill all of this. Matthew 5, 17, think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. When we find a law, when we find uh, an expression of God's standards in Moses, we can be sure that that is what Christ did, that he fulfilled every jot and tittle of this law. Christ was also foreshadowed in the law by way of the sacrifices that were commanded. Exodus 12, 5, your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. Ye shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats, and ye shall keep it up until the 14th day of the same month. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening, and they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two side houses, wherein they shall eat it. In verse 13, and the blood shall be for you a token upon the houses where ye are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and the plagues shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. In all of the uh, sacrifices, including this first sacrifice that the children of Israel participated in, Jesus Christ is prefigured as the spotless lamb, the lamb without blemish before the Lord whose blood would cause God to pass over the people. In John 1, 29, the next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him and saith, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sins of the world. And this he did by taking the curse on himself. Galatians three thirteen, Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed, is everyone that hangeth on a tree. Not only did Jesus Christ fulfill all of the requirements of the law, he was a perfectly obedient uh, servant of the Lord, but he also took the punishment of the law on our behalf. He was accursed with all those cursings that we read about this morning and just a little while ago. When it says, curse shall you be when you go out, and curse shall you be when you come in, and curse shall you be until you perish, Jesus Christ took that cursing on himself on the cross. Christ was also foreshadowed in the priesthood who gave the sacrifices to God. Leviticus 16.30 says, For on that day shall the priest make an atonement for you, to cleanse you that ye may be clean from all your sins before the Lord. Not only the sacrifice, but the priest also who gives himself for the life of his people. Hebrews seven twenty six. for such an high priest became us who is holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners and made higher than the heavens who needeth not daily as those high priests to offer up sacrifice first for his own sins 
and then for the sins of the people. For this he did once, when he offered up himself. For the law maketh men high priests which have infirmity, but the word of the oath which was since the law maketh the son who is consecrated forevermore. He was the fulfillment of all the priesthood, the priests who died, the priests who failed and sinned, the priests who could never take away the sins of the people. Jesus perfectly fulfilled this office by the word of the promise that God made. Christ's salvation is also foretold as being through faith alone. In Numbers 21, 6, And the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people, and much people of Israel died. Therefore the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against thee. Pray unto the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. And Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said unto Moses, Make thee a fiery serpent, and set it upon a pole. And it shall come to pass that every one that is bitten, when he looketh upon it, shall live. This uh, token of salvation to the people of Israel. When they had sinned and were worthy of the death being brought on them, God said only to look to this token of the covenant that he made with them. This fiery serpent that would save them from that death. Jesus, uh, making application of this to himself, said in John 3.14, As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Application of that, that by faith in him, simply looking and trusting in the promise that God made, that they who believe should not perish, but have eternal life by him. Christ was also foretold, not just as the one who would take away our sins and who would uh, serve the office of a mediator for us, but also as our prophet, as the one who would ensure that God's people obeyed him. Deuteronomy 18.15 says, The Lord thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee, of thy brethren, like unto me. Unto him ye shall hearken. He said that, he would raise, that God would raise up a prophet, a servant of the Lord, who would go and speak the words of the Lord to his people, and to him they would hear. They did not hearken to the voice of Moses, but to him they will hearken. They will believe his words. They will do his words. In Matthew 17, 5, While he yet spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. And behold, a voice out of the cloud which said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. Jesus in his office of a prophet to us in speaking the words of life to us. He is able effectually to cause us to obey God, to cause us to love his law and to walk in his law, not for our righteousness, because that hope was lost long ago, but rather out of a new heart that he's given us because he died for us, because his life has been given to us. He's able to make it so that we, at one point, when our sanctification is brought to a close, that we will never walk away from the commandments of God again. Revelation 20 to 11, He that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. This by the commandment of Christ himself, our prophet, unto whom we do hearken. And finally, Christ in his own self is our conqueror and our king. In Numbers 24, 17, I shall see him, but not now. I shall behold him, but not nigh. 
There shall come a star out of Jacob, and a scepter shall rise out of Israel, and shall smite the corners of Moab and destroy all the children of Sheth, and Edom shall be a possession, Seor also shall be a possession for his enemies, and Israel shall do valiantly. Out of Jacob shall come he that shall have dominion and shall destroy him that remaineth of the city. Notice that last verse. He that shall have dominion. He that shall go out and have dominion over all the works of God's hand, just as God had promised to Adam and had called Adam to, to go and have dominion and subdue the earth. And that he also repeated to Noah, and he repeated to Abraham, in his promises to them. Jesus Christ is the fulfillment of this. The star rising out of Jacob, the scepter that goes out and conquers the whole world for his own glory's sake. All of this Jesus Christ does. He fulfills all that Moses spoke about. All that was revealed in times past through the apostle or through the prophets and which the apostles bore witness to. Jesus is the fulfillment of all of this. And so, believers, this week I pray that we would simply remember all of the blessings that Christ bought for us by his own labors. Again, in Deuteronomy 9.6, we read that this was not for our sakes, not because of what we had done, Understand, therefore, that the Lord thy God giveth thee not this good land to possess it for thy righteousness, for thou art a stiff-necked people. Remember and forget not how thou provokest the Lord thy God to wrath in the wilderness from the day that thou didst depart out of the land of Egypt until ye come unto this place. Ye have been rebellious against the Lord." And in verse 29 of Deuteronomy 9, Yet they are thy people and thine inheritance, which thou boughtest, broughtest out by thy mighty power and by thy stretched out arm. Not for our own sake, not because we are righteous or we could keep the law or the conditions that God set on obtaining life, but because we are his possession because he has marked us out for his own. And by Christ, he has given us all of these blessings. Let's also remember the obedience of Christ to all of this. How he did not fail one of these commandments. How he is our example in all things. And looking to him, and seeing what he did in the heart that he had to obey God, I pray that we would be spurred on to follow after him and to obey God as best as we know how in this time. Hebrews 5, 8 says, Though he were a son, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. By way of description, we are called they that obey him, those who hearken to his words. And so this week, let us do just that. Let's hear his words and obey what he has for us to do. And now if there's an unbeliever here tonight, just as I uh, said this morning, I'll say to you now that Jesus Christ is made a great high priest a great mediator, the only one who is able to save your soul from your sins. Hebrews 7.22 says, By so much was Jesus made a surety of a better testament. And they truly were many priests because they were not suffered to continue by reason of death. But this man, because he continueth ever, hath an unchangeable priesthood. Wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. Jesus, uh, as a, a priest, uh, as, as continuing ever, as uh, standing in heaven on our behalf, 
Only by coming to him can you be forgiven of your sins. We saw earlier that the wages of sin is death, that you shall be cursed until you perish out of the way, except you come to Jesus. He is able to save to the uttermost whatever sin you have committed. He can save you out of it. He can forgive you of it. And so I pray that you would come and believe on him. Deuteronomy 30 verse 19 says, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. Come unto God by faith in Jesus Christ and have this life. Do not choose the cursing over God's eternal blessing in Jesus. And so please come to the Lord. And again, believers, we know the blessing in Jesus. Uh, we see the obedience that he uh, had towards God, that he fulfilled all of the law of God, and we as his people ought to follow in his footsteps, not for righteousness' sake, but for his sake, out of love for him, out of striving to be like him. Let us go out of this place and uh, follow in his footsteps of obedience. And now let's go to our Lord in prayer. Well, Father God, we come to your throne tonight. And Lord, we thank you for Jesus. We thank you for his perfect obedience, for his submission to death on the cross. Lord, for him, uh, his voice that speaks to us tonight in his word. Lord, we pray that you would help us to have his commandments engrafted on our heart. Lord, uh, help us to uh, ever be closer to his mindset and his heart. Lord, we pray that you would place an opportunity before us this week to serve you. Uh, Lord, to take up the, the cross that Christ has given us to bear and to follow him wherever he leads us to go. Lord, we pray especially that you'd give us a chance to preach his gospel to someone this week. Lord, we pray that you'd be with those that are not with us, uh, that you would show them your mercy. Lord, be with our missionaries and our leaders. Lord, we pray that where we've each sinned against you, even today and this week, that you would forgive us of it and that you'd cleanse us. Lord, we pray that you would keep us safe and that you'd bring us back together again to worship you uh, later on in the week. It's in your son Christ Jesus' name we pray all this. Amen.